OK, so we've talked about fuel to get back. We've got water, we've got air, we've arrived on Mars. Uh, but I could get pretty hungry unless I have some food. And we've already had to supply enough food for our year-long mission to Mars. So by the time I get there, I'm going to be pretty fed up with your little freeze-dried astronaut food. Uh, can we actually generate our own food on the surface of Mars, or do we have to take it all with, with us from Earth? Well, and this is surprisingly one of the big things, right? As you said, if you have water and you have fuel, it's solvable. Food, we can't really go, we can't make that up, right? Yes. And just with the fuel problem, if we have to bring all of our food for years, it's not cost effective, it's not efficient, right? It's the same fuel problem. So can we grow gardens on Mars? And this is actually a huge body of work that is happening now in space. Because without this, it's kind of like the water problems, so at least the water problem, we know the ice is there and we kind of know how to do this on Earth, so we kind of know how to do that on Mars. Do we actually know how to grow food on Mars? And that's where the work is happening. So one problem is that the sunlight's going to be weaker, yes. so there's less photosynthesis, that'll presumably mean plants grow slower. So, yep, so that's one thing. Is you Do get... we know if they can actually survive with less sun? I, was, well, I suppose on Earth there are plenty of plants that can survive in shade, and so being you know, the, the rainforest floor or an indoor house plant, you're getting less sun than you get on Mars. So I, mean, I guess we know that can work. So yes, yeah, so, the, so the, I guess the question would be, you have to choose the right plants. You, get to, you don't get to choose everything, because you have to find the one that can adapt to the right environment with the right amount of sunlight. And other things. So you can control the temperature, right? You know, greenhouses, we do this yes. all the time. You don't want to plant them outside. That's right, you're not going to plant them outside. <laughs> we think the frosts are bad in Canberra <laughs> on Mars. Whoa. But one thing we can't really easily change is the soil they grow in. We have the water, we can get the sunlight, but we can't really change the soil. But do we even need soil? I mean, on Earth, a lot of things are increasingly being grown in hydroponics where there's no soil at all, just micronutrients pumped down water. So we might not need soil. Well, in fact, that's actually what Mar uh, NASA and Mars is looking at is, all right, well, what essential nutrients, the macro and micronutrients, so how big or small do they need? And do they even exist in some ratios on Mars? And, and surprisingly, most of the things here, oxygen, carbon, uh, nitrogen, manganese, iron, they are there. I mean, and Mars and Earth were made from yep. the same protoplanetary nebula, and they've all going to have roughly the same minerals. The trouble is those minerals might not be at the surface. That's exactly right. So they may not be in the surface or in the ratios you need. Uh, and these are you know, zinc, nickel, iron, uh, chlorine. And in fact, what you see is these ratios are quite different to Earth. So Yes, they exist, but not in the exact same ratios as they are here on Earth. And this was actually a problem that the early settlers in Australia faced, because Australia is a very old continent. A lot of minerals that were quite common in surface rocks in other parts of the world have been leached out. Because, um, large areas of Australia, the soils have been there for uh, 100 million years, and it was depleted a lot of actually rather rare elements that you mm -hmm. didn't think you were going to need. And one of the big breakthroughs of Australian agricultural research was discovering that you needed these very small amounts of trace elements, and you scatter them, and suddenly things would grow much better. <laughs> Um, that wouldn't be too hard because no. the rare elements, well, the trouble would be smelting them on Mars. They're probably there in very small quantities, but if you have to mine 100 tons to get it, that's going to be hard for an early colony. But if it only needs a few micrograms, you can carry that with you. Exactly. And as you said, it's also looking at the ideas of like hydroponics and just other ways of growing this. And in fact, this is what's happening on the space station right now. So the space station obviously doesn't have any dirt. Um, they do bring up some from Earth to get it, but they've actually been testing, you know, just how poorly can you treat a vegetable and see it grow? Because I could have told them that from my garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, they're doing it in a controlled manner. Yes. Uh, yeah, but that's exactly right. You know, what, what is the bare essential do you need? And more importantly, are there species that grow better? Are there species that grow differently? Because one of the keys is not just having one vegetable that that's all you have. Well, you're not going to get the right amount of nutrition as a human. Yes. We actually need the variety. Uh, and so they've grown lettuce, they've grown cabbage, uh, kale, uh, mustard seeds. They've recently grown chilies um, and made the first space tacos. I was a very big fan of that. So they're showing on the space station that you, yeah, you can do this. The space station is telling you you can do it in zero gravity. Yes. It's not telling you you can do it with Martian exact, soils. That's the exact key. So uh, a recent study has taken essentially what they did was they have Mars in red, 
the moon in yellow and earth in green. So they said, all right, let's take, what are the ratios of moon dirt? What are the ratios of Mars dust dirt? And can we grow things? So here we have essentially weeds and flowers. We have special plants that as they call them nitrogen fixtures, actually put nitrogen into the soil. And these, which are the important things. So we have rye, we have carrots, uh, tomatoes, uh, and cress. So we actually have vegetables on the right side. And so it actually looks like the Mars dot is higher, definitely higher than the moon, comparable or even often higher than the Earth. So that, and this is quite good soil. Exactly. In fact, if you uh, set up the soil well and add some of those nutrients, those things that we kind of learnt on Earth, it's actually not that hard. Um, as you said, a lot better than the moon. The moon is a very different challenge. Um, but on Mars, yeah, it's at least as good to Earth in terms of you know leaves, germination, flowers. Uh, and, you know, more importantly, alive for 50 days. It's no good if it's only alive for 10 days. I think, Paul, your garden's probably down here, sounds like. But, um, you know, yeah, you're, you're getting 80 to 100 days. So that's, that's enough to feed humans for a life cycle. Obviously, you're going to replant and that sort of thing. So it does appear the case that you can grow food in Martian soil. With probably the Martian soil taken up and broken up into minerals and yeah. flowed through some hydroponics. You're probably not actually going to be digging a hole in the ground and planting it. No, that's exactly right. You're going to actually have to do some work to the soil, but the raw ingredients are there. And this is always the key we were talking about. Same with water. Are the things there to use instead of us having to bring it up? And it appears to be that's the case.